I regret to inform you that I've been fish hooked. You've probably heard by now that Bioshock is a game franchise that's fond of multiple endings, mostly. And in the first two games, the path to each ending revolves around the little sisters. They're basically bottles of cherry red line with feelings. And after ruthlessly taking the life of their only friend in the world, you can either shoot straight child life energy into your veins, or take them semi-willingly to one of the many conveniently placed shadowy wall holes. Snort the kid's bad ending, take the kid's good ending. Now, there are 21 of these things in one, and 12 in two, and as I believe was fair of me, I assumed that to get the best, most goodest Christmas ending in Bioshock 2, you'd have to rescue every single one of them. Why? Because that's how it worked in one. But no, apparently you're dandy just as long as you don't kill any of them and spare all the villains. Which makes sense. That's fine. Totally fine. It's good game design to do it that way. Nobody wants to sit there and kill one billion big daddies and a quarter million big sisters. It's the worst part of the game. What person would willingly subject themselves to repeating the same bland, uninteresting scenario over and over and over again? with slight variation of which the only reward for doing so is another bland, uninteresting encounter with a slightly better soundtrack. Nobody would do that, as long as, of course, they were aware that they didn't need to, if it were made clear that those were the rules. As long as the only possible way to find this information wouldn't be to refine Google searches for a half hour, parsing through waves of conflicting information to just barely reach a state of vestigial confusion. Thank you, 2K, for deftly avoiding this outcome. And my criticism lies with more than just the biggins. If I'm being completely completely honest, the combat in general really relies a lot on its oomph factor. Though not for the first four levels, before you unlock the spear gun. Until then, it's a pretty good system of checking your ammo consumption and using cover, but then it becomes a game of... And it is fun, but you know what? Being able to use such a high damage weapon with effectively infinite ammunition against basically all of the non-armored enemies in the game, and apparently not actually needing to fight basically any armored enemies, kinda negates all the, uh... Well, to put it delicately, fucking challenge. I will submit that I was able to afford basically every upgrade I could have ever wanted because of all the super fun big daddy killing I did, but you could definitely get away with significantly less. I didn't even do any of the harvesting minigames, which, speaking of, I would rather plow Kansas than ever actually do one of those. I know there's gene tonics that expedite part of your sentence, but wearing sunglasses doesn't make me want to stare into the sun. In general though, again, it is fun. It's like if the crossbow in Half-Life had infinite ammo and was therefore the only only weapon in the game. Not challenging and therefore not necessarily good, but fun. The plasmids are another good example. They technically all have their uses, but why would I use any of this random bullshit when I could just zap? And before you start pouring me horse piss about oil puddles, allow me to reiterate. That said, literally everything else is phenomenal. The level design, the world building, the characters. But need I even say it? It's a Bioshock. 2K could print it on a poster and quote themselves, you wouldn't even question it. Every detail in every stage feels like a seamlessly integrated part of an enormous industrial grade tapestry. There isn't so much as a hallway that feels like it's taking me to the next area in a video game. It all feels like genuine parts of a real world. The characters are all completely insane, but I'd honestly say that none of them feel absurd to the point of being comedic. They're funny, but not laughable. They're all appropriately loony for the situations they're in. Stanley is consumed by his paranoia, Simon by a faith that has become a necessary coping mechanism, Gilbert Alexander is a turd in a tube, and the lambs play their roles beautifully. There aren't any sodium spiking twists like in the first game, but the arc is so smooth I could break my neck on it. The one sorry bruise being that Sinclair was kind of a cheap excuse for a confidant. He existed to talk for you, and his death, while uniquely tragic, was about as impactful as he was. So in summary, it was fun, and all the not fun parts were completely unnecessary, and I only did them because the developers need to learn to communicate with their audience about the rules. Blues, 20th century blues, they're getting me down. Who's escaped those weary 20th century blues?